Welcome to the quick and dirty tutorial series where I'm going to teach you fast, practical, useful tips that you can implement into your website right now. Rule number one, keep it quick. I'm going to try to do these tutorials in 10 minutes or less, get rid of any of the fluff, and let's just get right to the damn point. Rule number two, keep it dirty. No fancy editing, no bells and whistles. I'm just going to show you exactly how to do the thing that I said I was going to do. And if I happen to mess up along the way, I'm going to leave it in so that we can all learn from my mistake because inevitably you will probably make one too. Okay, let's dive in. In today's video, we are going to be talking about the quick stack element, which is a new element that Webflow released maybe at the end of last year. As you know, I love using Reloom components and I love using all things FinSuite and just having like a really efficient client first workflow. And I noticed that this element was not necessarily being adopted into some of those style guides, which made me curious about do we like this element? Do we not? What is it? When should it be used? If it should even be used at all? So that's what we're going to break down today. I'm going to recreate a component on one of my websites using QuickStack. And then I'm also going to do the same thing using Grid, which is its closest related element. So starting off, this is the component that we are going to be recreating today. So we've got a nice long full width video light box and a header and a little, you know, subheading here. So first off, I am just going to do Command E to bring up the Find Anything tool. Um, pro tip, do this <laughs> and just throw this quick stack in here. And let's talk about what this is. So right off the bat, I love that it has these predetermined layouts and components. I think that's really the benefit of what quick stack is, is it's doing it quickly. And if you maybe don't have a ton of experience with Webflow and customizing elements exactly to your liking. I would put it in a similar camp as some of its other elements, like a section or a container or any of these new Vflex, Hflex. They're really meant to be speedy and so that you don't have to choose what display setting it's on. And I think take some of the manual guesswork out of it, which can be great. But I find myself not really using them a ton because I just create everything with a div block and then give it custom classes using the client first naming system. So. QuickStack, and I think it's important to note too, QuickStack is an element, not a display setting. So unlike Grid, which they've now moved all the way down to the bottom here, which is strange because I still use that all the time. Unlike Grid, yeah, it's not a display setting. It is an element. So let's create a, we're going to want two by two. And it seems like you can create, you know, lots of different variations, which is nice. But let's start by grabbing this video light box. And I'm just going to copy and paste it directly into this quick stack element. And as I click into it, we see that it is made up of what they're calling a cell. And there's four of them. So even in the navigator here, within our quick stack element, which is essentially a grid, that already has div blocks placed within it, which they're calling cells. So typically, if you were to use a grid, it does not come with divs in, in it. There's no elements within it. So that's one slight difference between quick stack and grid already. So I pasted my video into that cell. And now I want to basically merge these two cells. There's two things I can do. I can either click and drag to make this column or this cell wider and larger, but that's actually not what I want to do. So I want to bring it back to 50-50. I just clicked Command-Z there. And instead, I'm going to merge it, which is this little icon here. I've now combined these two cells into one column. So this is, is really where this tool comes into handy. It's just speedy and it's nice and efficient. And now next up, I'm going to grab, I'm just going to copy and paste that heading throw it into this cell and I'm going to do the same thing here. I'm going to grab my div block that has the paragraph and the button and I'm going to paste it into this cell. Okay, so we look pretty close to the initial design. We just need to make these two bottom rows a bit more of a two-thirds third situation. So I guess is I am just going to take this cell, we have to make sure we're clicking the cell and not the div, and just drag it over. Which 
actually looks about perfect and I'm sure I could also adjust the padding here if I wanted there to be a little bit more. Let's see if I click quick stack. Yeah, so I could make this maybe 24 in the columns and the rows. So we do have some control over that, which is nice. And then responsively, all right, let's say once I got down to a smaller tablet, I wanted this to just be three rows. Um, what I would do, I believe, is I would take this cell and I would change it to a two column span. And then I would do the same thing below it with this cell and change it to a two column span. And that was pretty easy to make responsive. So I do love that and that doesn't affect what we've done in the desktop, because as we know, things cascade down. That was pretty easy, but here's where we run into some issues. Here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna delete this dip block real quick, and we've got our cell, and I am going to paste, let's say I'm maybe a little bit newer to Webflow, and I'm using QuickStack, and it seems great, or I'm a client, and I'm just throwing elements in here all willy-nilly, because what do I know? So I'm gonna grab that button wrapper too. I'm even gonna grab the margin top wrapper. And I'm gonna paste that under my paragraph and I've put it into a cell because as far as I know, these cells are divs and I don't need to think beyond that, right? But where it can get tricky, so let's say we're now gonna make the grid example of this. And my first step is gonna be I'm gonna add in this photo. Doing this a little out of order, so bear with me. All right, added the video. Okay, so now I wanna bring these elements, this div, this cell over into a grid. Let's say I've changed my mind, I want it to be in a grid or in a flex box. And because QuickStack is an element and not a display mode, I can't turn QuickStack into a grid or flexbox the way that I can with a grid, right? If I have QuickStack selected, that option, that display option, it isn't even visible. So that to me is already a red flag. I don't love that. I like to keep things flexible. So I'm gonna copy, why don't I take this cell and maybe I wanted to copy into my grid. And we're gonna very quickly see that I can't do that. As it says, cell can only be pasted in a QuickStack. And that's what I really don't love. That's the one big downfall with QuickStack is just, it's not as flexible. I can't maneuver things around as easily. I can't copy and paste in and out of it as easily. And especially if I wanted to change the order of these cells, if I wanted this for some reason to be on the left, I can't use the same shortcuts that I normally can do. Normally I would do command left bracket and it would, I'm clicking in that right now, it would just move over to the left. It's not doing that here. I'm also not able to maneuver the cells manually within the navigator. Like I can't click and drag them right that. It gets kind of glitchy, which I hate. <laughs> so that's where grid still really wins for me. So now I'm actually gonna select the initial design I had of this that is with inside a div. Because basically if you're gonna use the quick stack element, which I think there is still value in, you know, it's quick. But if you're gonna do it, a pro tip is that you should always be putting divs inside of your cells first to act as wrappers. So that way it's easier for you to copy and paste things inside and out of them. Otherwise it could end up costing you some time. So I'm now gonna paste that element over here. And let's make this light box. I'm gonna have it manually over on the right. The grid child, I'm gonna have it do a two column span. And then I'm gonna show you why this is great. So let's say I did this out of order, as I just did. And I'm now gonna add my heading in here. But oh no, I did it backwards. I wanna move this over. I can do command left bracket on this element and they're gonna switch. And that is my favorite thing about grids is how easy it is to move items from left to right and swap with each other. I can also do that inside the navigator as well, simply just by dragging them up and down which keeps things flexible and is really important because I like to build as I go. So flexibility is key for me. Now we want to edit this grid just a little bit 
to get this to look like our initial design. I'm gonna click Edit Grid over here, and what we're gonna be working with instead of just dragging it down here is gonna be dragging it up here by that fractional unit. I'm just gonna pull it over a bit to get that sort of three-quarter vibe. And then if we go into the iPad mode, what I would do is I would take this grid child element, and again, I would just do this two column span. We're gonna, this is essentially the exact same thing that we did with the quick span, so I don't necessarily think one is better than another in this case when it comes to responsiveness. It's relatively simple for both of them. But that's the difference between the two, really. And another really important thing to note is that you cannot add CMS content into a quick stack. You can only add static content, so not dynamic content. That CMS content still needs to and always will be put inside of a grid. So that's just another vote for grids for me. I think I'm still team grid through and through. It makes sense why maybe Reloom and some other component companies haven't adopted QuickStack because it's just not quite as flexible. I do think it, that QuickStack would be an easy way to teach a client to add some sections to their pages. So for that, I would certainly use it because it does feel a bit more drag and drop like a Squarespace builder might, so it might feel more intuitive to them. And one final thing I've noticed about QuickStack too that it's a bit surprising to me. I'm gonna grab this cell and copy and paste it. Can I even just duplicate a cell? It doesn't seem to be letting me, okay. <laughs> Don't love that either. But let's say, all right, I'm gonna grab the whole quick stack now and I'm gonna add a third column, okay? And I let's say I want this image, this light box inside of this cell and I want to merge this over to the third column. And now I'm gonna grab the cell and I'm gonna do Command C and then I'm going to, I think if I click it and paste it, okay, so it does work that way, which at least is a little bit more helpful. But let's say I've done this for whatever reason I wanted to duplicate content if I had different cards or something. And now I've changed my mind and I'm like, wait, actually, I don't want it to be three columns. I would like to remove a column and have that third card drop down as it would in a grid. If I go to do that and remove that second column, it deletes the content that I've added. <laughs> I don't know why it does that. If you were to do that in grid, it would just automatically add another row and, and bump it down. So another point in the con column for QuickStack that it just really is not that flexible. Um, I, I don't love that. But again, for clients, it's easy to learn and do. So there is still a pro. I understand why it was built, but still team grid for sure. That's it. That's the video. If you've got a request for something specific you want to see, drop that in the comments down below and I will happily add it to the list. And if you found this helpful and you want to see more in the quick and dirty tutorial series, hit that subscribe button and you will get notified for the next one. And I'll see you then.